two days, 19 hours on the road, 1,300 miles, finally back in Texas. All right, so right now it's like 9 p.m. I've been home for like 45 minutes to an hour. Today's workout is a max effort deadlift day with accessory back stuff and then bicep stuff. My hip flexors are absolutely killing me. They're super tight just for me in a car for like literally two days straight. Uh, so like one of the biggest things I do before going into a deadlift workout is I'll just warm up like 135, taking the reps really slow. It helps me focus where my tightness is and where I need to focus my mobility for pre-workout going into the deadlift. So today obviously my hips, my hamstrings, uh, my lower back. So what I like to do is just work with the bar and put myself in positions that we'll be deadlifting in and then working out those kinks and then adding in some maybe uh, some other mobility stuff just to stretch out a little bit, get ready. So I'm gonna do a max effort day today. Um, we're gonna work up as high as I can and then backing off to 80% for three sets at five reps to 80%. Tonight's like a prime example of why I feel my workouts. So like 315 felt normal. I felt like I was doing it as I normally would watching the clip then. Cause I watch a clip after every set. My hips are sitting higher than they typically do just because of a lack of mobility tonight. Um, so I'm gonna work out a little more, but when I'm deadlifting in this next set at 405, I'm gonna focus on keeping my hips a little lower so that my lower back doesn't compensate for that. So it's been probably, I'd say six months since I've had a 585 deadlift, six plates. Um, but I'm gonna try it now. My problem area, or my weakness, has always been off the floor. And it's it's like half mental, half physical. Um, because I feel the weight, and I'm afraid my hips are gonna shoot up and I'm gonna hurt my back. Um, so if I take off the floor pretty aggressive, most likely the deadlift is pretty successful. So we're gonna try 585. I am on a pretty good high note right now. To start off the new year with a short-term PR 585 on deadlifts, super happy about it because it felt good, it looked good. Watching the film, it looked pretty smooth. So my short-term goal coming up here will be to break 600 and then in 2016, break 625 on sumo. Um, I think the biggest thing that's helping my deadlift right now is the accessory work after my max effort. So doing the 80% the five reps, three sets, burner, like it hurts. The biggest thing I focus on is treating each rep as it's like a, a one rep max. You know, no touching goes off the floor. Uh, I finished off the workout with just some accessory stuff for upper back, two bicep exercises. I'm feeling good though, I'm feeling really good. All right, so first thing I'm doing this morning is getting groceries. I've been living off of eggs and Raisin Bran Crunch for the past two meals because that's all I had in my house. I literally have nothing. Like, this is the lowest I've been on groceries for quite a while because I've been gone for two weeks. So I ended up spending around $81, which is it's pretty good for the amount of food I got. So when I get home, I'll show you exactly what I got. HEB has like the best prices. I used to go to Walmart all the time, but HEB is is that much better. All right, so I'm gonna show you the foods I bought broken down by macronutrients. So first I'm gonna show you carbs. I'm gonna start off with probably my favorite. I got four of these for $5. These are Kodiak Minute Muffins. You guys have seen these before. Really good carb source. You just throw in some water and an egg. Egg is optional and it makes like a really quick muffin. Really good for pre-workout. So I got four of those, apple, cinnamon, and dark chocolate. I got three cans of beans. So black beans, kidney beans, 
and also pinto beans. I'm gonna make like a chicken chili one of these days. 10 pounds of rice, which is a very cheap carb source, very convenient. Five pounds of red potatoes. Red potatoes are my favorite because you can eat them cold and they're pretty good. You can eat any potato cold, but red potatoes cold are pretty good. And it's only like $1.50 for five pounds. Whole wheat bread, five pounds of red delicious apples. This is something I picked up, it's, it's pretty different. So these are the Quaker puffed rice chips. Uh, it's like individual bags. So each bag has three grams of fat, 13 grams of carbs, one gram of protein. But these are good if you want to dip it in like a protein sludge or something like that. And then last but not least, the fat-free, sugar-free jello pudding mixes. Since I'm going back to work, the typical overnight oats every morning, Monday through Friday. So these are like 94 cents for a pack and two and a half packs last me a week. Protein sources is where I usually spend my most money, but occasionally you can find some pretty good deals. Um, so like, for example, today I got chicken, 4.7 pounds for $1.79. So that's like always a staple in the weekly pickup. These two things are not staples, but occasionally I'll just switch out my protein sources. So this is a pound and a half of tilapia. It's already seasoned, lemon pepper. And then I got 1.4 pounds of boneless pork chops. So I'll just throw these on the grill. I'll probably have this pre-workout today. I have some Greek yogurt, which is plain. And I'll just mix that with like protein powder and cereal. And I'm gonna include cheese in the protein sources um, because the cheese I picked up, it's five grams of fat, seven grams of protein per serving. I got two for $5 of this Monterey Jack. So just some basic spring mix. Uh, this is like my primary vegetable I'm gonna consume. I eat a lot of salads. Three avocados, just for a good fat source. I like mixing it with like rice and chicken. Crushed tomatoes. Uh, sometimes I'll throw this one with rice or I'll use it in my chicken chili. Guacamole, I actually got this free for buying the tilapia. Peanut butter, and then other condiments, barbecue sauce. I always go with Stubbs because for one, it's made in Austin, supporting like a local uh, a vendor. And only nine grams of carbs for two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. And then Bolt House Ranch, classic ranch. I use this stuff like crazy on everything. Post workout is eight ounces of chicken breast, two servings of whole wheat pasta with one serving of marinara sauce, and then just some spring mix with Bolt House Ranch dressing. One tip for chicken, so you can either buy chicken thinly cut or thinly cut it yourself. It's more expensive if you buy it that way. But the reason you wanna like cut it thin or tenderize it, and you can tenderize it like it's just mallet. It's a hammer, it has pins on it. It sounds weird, but you beat down the chicken, you tenderize it, it has more flavor, it cooks faster, and it's, it's more tender. I mean, it speaks for itself, and it's a lot easier to marinate too. So that's what I like to do with my chicken occasionally, especially like to grill it. You tenderize it, it's thin, it's good, it's good for like chicken parm. Try it. All right guys, so right now I'm in Ikea. I'm looking for picture frames for these prints right here. So I picked up these prints in, uh, in Trogues and Hershey Brewery. So they did all their new artwork and like all new artwork for all their bottles. So I picked up a few of these for the kitchen. Just need to find frames. Place is packed. Alright guys, so at Freebirds right now, I believe that if you think Chipotle is better than Freebirds, it's because you've never been to Freebirds. I've never had a Freebird burrito fall apart on me. Um, so this one is white chicken, it's a monster burrito. It's a white chicken, black beans, cilantro rice, vegetables, uh, pico de gallo, corn salsa, fajita vegetables, and uh, extra cilantro. So the macros are similar to Chipotle. Um, except you get a lot more food, a lot more volume, and like I said, they stay together a lot better. So I'll put the macros on the screen for what this burrito is, and on their site you can also calculate the nutrition. Just like uh, Chipotle, except they don't give you the macros, you kind of just got to find that in my fitness pal. Yeah. All right, so I got these these prints framed right now. I got three framed, each was like twelve dollars, so thirty six total, and then each print at Trogues was ten dollars. 
Uh, so this is one. It's a Troganator. It's one of their beers, their Double Bock beer. This one is their hot back, and it's pretty cool. It just shows like what's in the, the beer and you know the ingredients to make it. Toffee, carrots, chipotle peppers, pine snap. And then this is another one of their IPAs, Perpetual. Uh, none of these are like their scratch beer. So Trogues is pretty cool because they make like experimental beers, and they sell them on tap at Trogues. But these are like their seasonal beers year-round. Also, if you're not following me on Instagram, do so now. Uh, in the next couple of days, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for either like flight, intra-flight, some sort of supplement giveaway, and that's where I'll, I'll announce the, uh, the contest and choose the winner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That wraps it up. I will talk to you in the next one.